following up on all the uh, holiday weekend news, failed former President Donald Trump did an interview so humiliating that even his friend Wayne Allen Root couldn't save him. Wayne Allen Root has been a guest on this program many times. I encourage you to check out my conversations with Wayne and you will probably learn a lot about the type of person that he is politically. He was interviewed. Uh, sorry, he interviewed Donald Trump uh, over the weekend, and we're going to just look at some of it. And uh, it's it's all pretty nauseating, to be perfectly frank. Huge fan and President Trump. A big fan, sir. I welcome you to America's Top Ten Countdown with Wayne Allen. Good. How are you? Good. Thanks, uh, Wayne. It's great being with you. It's always great being with you. We have we've done some good work together. We have, you know, you know, I'm on your team. By the way, the explosive platform Rumble was able to deliver 27,000 views for this interview. Jeez, oh boy. 110% forever. I'm that. loyal for life. Yep. And that's my ball game. When I'm loyal, I'm loyal. And that's it. I never go back. We need that's you back right. as president. And my opening commentary, which you haven't even heard yet, but I'm sure you'll get a chance to see a copy of the show. My opening commentary. They're going to send him a copy of it. <laughs> Not the original. They're going to send him a copy. Was for this Christmas, I want everyone to appreciate the great gift of President Donald J. Trump, because he is our Braveheart. He is our William Wallace. If you remember wow. Mel Gibson's movie Braveheart, it's you fighting against the deep state and the deep Well, of course, I remember that movie, Wayne. And by the way, Mel Gibson was treated totally unfairly by that Jewish cop, completely unfairly. Gibson was, was right to ask, are you a Jew? And uh, listen, we got we, we, sorry, what? See swamp, and you're the only thing between them and all of us being serfs and slaves. So we appreciate you. I appreciate you, and I I pray to God you're back again in 24. Well, that's really nice, and the rhinos too. You know, the rhinos are really bad <laughs> in a lot of ways. They're worse than the Democrats. At right. least you you know where yep. the Democrats are coming from. But these rhinos that we have, and guys like Mitch McConnell, is so bad. Like this omnibus bill, it's not even a, it's not even believable they're going to pass it. Horrible. It's uh, just an Horrible. incredible I mean, thing. It's uh, how he gets and away I, I with this you, stuff. Go ahead. I, I know you commented. By the way, the, the, the talking over each other is the entire interview. On the omnibus bill. I saw your comments today. Yeah, Same as mine. Terrible. How could Republicans vote for this? Why would Republicans vote for this? Because Mitch McConnell raises money and he gives it to Republican senators and they go out and vote. Very simple. He's not a leader. He just raises money and he gives it, you know, he pays, gives them a lot of money. And it's amazing, you know, that they can get that by because they needed 10 senators, 10 or 12, and he gets the 10 or 12, including himself. It's a horrible bill. Do you know, on the border security, we get nothing. And yet we're giving four or five countries border security for almost five hundred million dollars. So they're allowed to have border Correct. security and we're not. It's not even it's not even possible what they're doing. And now, remember, nobody on the left is saying we can't have a border or border security. There's just I, there's no one on the left is saying that. The point is, can we fix immigration, deal with DACA? actually determine what we think we're solving with a wall, realize it won't actually work and put in place solutions that make sense. The, they, these are straw man arguments on immigration. If they waited yeah, for two or three weeks, you'd, uh, you'd have the Republican Congress helping and would make a much better right. deal. But he doesn't. Well, he know, wants to get America's it done before the Republican <laughs> Congress comes in. This is America's top 10 countdown show. So I come up with the top 10, right? And you just covered quite a few of them. In other words, I said, here's a bill How that convenient. gives border security to Middle East countries, but none to ours. And here's yep. a bill that gives another 45 billion to Ukraine, but their invasion. But what about our border invasion? If Title 42 gets lifted, what's going to happen to America? Now, let's talk about Title 42. Title 42 was used by Trump to more quickly send migrants back to their home countries. OK, now the justification was we have a unique and explosive public health emergency COVID. Trump was simultaneously downplaying the severity of the pandemic while saying it is so historically bad that we need to use Title 42 to turn migrants around and do expedited deportations. Are how wait, huh? it, it, it's both not super serious, 
but so serious. We need to use something in a way that it hasn't been used for a really, really long time because it is such an emergency. It was pure politics. That's all it was. Well, right now it's doing better than we thought in the courts. The courts are sort of holding it up because, uh, you know, the judges are saying, like, this is crazy what they're doing to our country. You know, it's, it gets beyond the legal. It gets like it's common sense, most of this stuff. And uh, it'll certainly be a horrible thing. And right now it's extended to pass the weekend. But, you know, I was the one that put it in. It was my idea. All right. So Trump both taking credit for criticize. So immigration is a complete and total mess. Let's skip ahead to another section just to give you a little bit of the other flavor here. Yeah, no, I get it. Listen, I think you're as loyal as anyone to the Jewish people in the history of the White House. (laughs) Oh, right into it. huh? Nobody's been better for the Jews than you, Don. Nobody. And I understand your anger and I understand your questioning why the heck you're not getting the Jewish vote being loyal back to you. (laughs) I get it. I'm Jewish and I get it. So we've explained it before. Republicans and their pro Israel view, the way they define it, mostly appeals to evangelical Christians, not to Jewish Americans who overwhelmingly vote for Democrats because on issues. Jewish Americans overwhelmingly line up with Democrats. How many times do we have to explain this? 25 percent of the Jewish vote in 2016. I got 25 percent of the Jewish vote and I didn't do it for votes. I did it because it was the right thing to do. Then I did Golan Heights, which is a big deal. They were trying to get it for 60 years. I got it done in 15 minutes. I did Golan Heights, which is unbelievably important. But more importantly, I did the embassy. I did Jerusalem. Remember, the embassy. What he means is moving the U.S. embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. That only appeals to right wing Americans. That's who that appeals to. Um, uh, Progressive Jews like me recognize that you can't just unilaterally say we're putting the embassy in Jerusalem because it goes right at the heart of much of the Israeli Palestinian conflict and the sovereignty of Jerusalem and whether Jerusalem in an eventual two state solution, which may never come, whether Jerusalem will or won't be the international capital of Israel over a hypothetical Palestinian state. There is a reason why moving the embassy to Jerusalem didn't make progressive Jews, which is most of us come scrambling to vote for Trump. But he either doesn't get it or he doesn't want to accept it. Becoming the capital. I did all the capital. I know. And then I did great. They're all great. And then I did no, and then I did the Iran nuclear deal and terminated it, which is was probably the most valuable thing I did, if you want, because they want to they want to terminate Israel. So I did the Iran nuclear deal, and then a guy calls me up who I know who's been very good to me. Big strong guy. He was crying over it. He was on Tucker Carlson the other day, a couple of months ago, saying Trump is great, and he wanted to have dinner because I think he needed help, because he needs help. But I think he needed help. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden they say, oh, I'm having dinner with him and he's an anti-Semite. Now, how am I supposed to know he's an anti-Semite? If he is an anti-Semite, he didn't express that to me, by the way. <laughs> but if he is. How was I supposed to be aware of the major global story about Kanye that lasted two weeks on every news outlet? So all of a sudden. No, no, we've got to have more loyalty. The Jews should be more loyal to me, Wayne, like you. Yeah, no, I get it. Listen, Obama sat in the pew of an anti semite for 20 years, giving That's lectures right. at his church, Reverend Wright, and nobody ever said a word about it. The media, nah. liberals, no one. You have one dinner with a stranger and the whole world's against you. All right. So anyway, I won't do this. The, the entire thing is 19 minutes long. I think we've had enough of it, but a friendly interview and Trump ends up with the Jews should be more loyal to me. The Jews should be more loyal to me for that thing I did where I moved the, the, the cap at the embassy. Unbelievable stuff. Even Wayne Allen Root can't save Trump. Over this holiday season, please remember how many families around the world are living in extreme poverty. Our partner, Give Directly, is the nonprofit letting you send cash directly to the world's poorest households. Help the David Pakman Show reach our goal of $15,000 by the end of the year at givedirectly.org slash Pakman. A generous Give Directly donor. We'll match all donations up to $15,000 to help us hit that goal so your donation can have double the impact. Giving in someone's name is a great last minute holiday gift. 
When organizations give cash to families like this, about 90 cents on the dollar get to the recipient versus sometimes as little as 50 cents on the dollar in terms of relative impact with many other programs. That's why I reached out to give directly about doing this with us. Give directly is how you know every dollar you donate is going to good use. Giving even a few dollars can have a massive impact for someone living on a dollar or two a day. Help us reach $15,000 by December 31, and your donation will be doubled. Go to givedirectly.org slash Pacman. The link is down below.